When do you peak as an author? When do you become over the hill? And today we are going to hear from William Faulkner on the best age to write novels and poetry. And if you guys don't already know, Write Conscious is the headquarters of everything related to William Faulkner here on YouTube. If you look at the playlist down below, I've been posting Faulkner videos now every single day, and I plan to make videos on Faulkner's life, his books, and more videos on his writing advice. And this topic is a little bit odd because I say all the time on this channel that writing is different than athletics because you can improve into your 70s, 80s, and 90s. And I do think that that's true, but I don't think a 50 or 60 year old who is starting to write for the first time can necessarily start to write masterpieces. I think that the people who do improve into their elderly years already had a massive foundation and maybe they just found an idea or a feeling that was unique to them and gave them this fire to create something magnificent, better than their previous works. And enough for me, let's hear from Faulkner now. And he says, for fiction, the best age is from 35 to 45. Your fire is not all used up, and you know more. Fiction is slower. For poetry, the best age is from 17 to 26. Poetry writing is more like a skyrocket, with all of your fire condensed into one rocket. And I don't know if I agree with Faulkner, but if I just kind of roll with him for a second, it's an interesting thought, because when you look at a lot of the best masterpieces written by authors, they were written in you know between the ages of 35 and 50. But that was usually after 15 plus years of writing seriously, plus a very good education growing up where books and writing and knowledge was very present. And if you were raised in the public education system, most likely you received maybe 10% of the education that a lot of people got behind me. And a lot of the time, these people went to way better schools and had more intelligent parents than you and I did, or at least parents who cared enough to spend time teaching reading and writing skills. And so by the age of 35 or 40, a lot of fiction authors who've taken it seriously have done tens of, thousand hour, tens of thousands of hours of training, but they still have the fire. Because I can imagine if you've been writing fiction from the age of 20 and you're now 65, maybe you know more, but you do have less energy. And maybe a lot of your ideas don't feel as fresh and you don't care as much. I mean, I hate to say it, but now that I'm in my 30s, I've been doing calisthenics and yoga, martial arts and other things now for over a decade and they've become stale and I always have to freshen things up. And I can only imagine how I'm going to feel when I'm 50 or 60 and I'm 40 years into that journey and I have less energy and my body doesn't work as well, which is, you know, equivalent to the mind. And I'll critique Faulkner in a second, but let's just kind of roll with his mindset for poetry also. And he says it's from 17 to 26. And when you see people like Rimbaud, when you see people like John Keats, who I think died around age 26, and plenty of other poets, you can see why that would be the case. And poetry does kind of spring forth from a certain energy. And when I look back at some of my poems from like my early to mid 20s, there was a sense of energy that I don't necessarily have now. But I think Faulkner's kind of ignorant, I should say, to some of the more internal elements of poetry. And what do I mean by that? Well, Robert Bly, who I think is probably one of the best American poets and most likely the most influential American poet of all time, when you look at his total contribution, he said that poets should not publish until they are, after, to, until they are 30 years or older. And he also didn't believe in MFA programs or endowment programs and said the best thing you can do as a poet is to go live in a hut and learn silence. And he believed that when you look at people like Rimbaud and a lot of these other people, there are some exceptions but most of the time, young poetry and young writing is mostly ignorance. I see people who post their poetry in my comments all the time. They're like, hey, let me read this. Or I've had students write poetry. And when it's kind of unleashed and it's confessional or not refined, most of the time it's just navel-gazing. Most of the time it's just mewing, unfortunately, over things that don't necessarily matter and aren't impactful to other people, that don't connect to something deeper. And Bly looked to... A lot of different poets, um, the German romantic poets like Novalis and Holderlin, uh, the Chinese poets like Li Po, Cold Mountain, and Tu Fu, and others. And they spent years in meditation. They spent a ton of time out in nature contemplating. And people like Basho and others didn't really start writing prolifically until their 50s, their 60s. When you look at a poet like Ikkyu in Japan, those poems that they wrote don't come from the ego. 
A Basho haiku that I like is, the temple bells stop ringing, but the sounds keep coming out of the flowers. Something like that. That's more beautiful than 99% of poetry released today, but it's much more simple. But how do you get to that point to be able to write that? It's from years of silence, years spent out in nature. And so I don't think that Faulkner, in terms of poetry and his analysis, was tapped into what can happen when a refined person who understands either how to ascend or descend touches poetry. When you look at Rilke, when you wrote his Duino elegies and his sonnets to Orpheus over the course of three weeks, which is probably the greatest creative streak of inspiration ever. I don't know if anyone can match that. Writing two of the best poetry books of all time in like two or three weeks, that's insane. But Rilke at that time was 47 and had not written a poem in years, close to a decade, and was ron- wandering around with health problems, just trying to feel better. He was only a couple years away from death. And so with poetry, people like Rimbaud and Keats had the ability to unconsciously leap, to jump from the conscious to the unconscious, and create beautiful metaphors, beautiful writing. And most of the time that requires a very special talent and a sense of living. When you look at Rimbaud and how he was living his life, it is not anywhere close to the life and the talent of the average everyday poet in their 20s. And so it's hard to say what to do, though, because as a young poet, you just can't stop. You just can't say, I'm not going to write anything until I'm 30. But what Bly recommended is you don't publish anything until you're 30. And maybe you look back and you have stuff that you really like, but it teaches you that publishing isn't everything, that making money in this industry isn't everything because you shouldn't make po- money from poetry anyway. Bly said that fiction has, tur- you know, has turned into a joke because it's all about making money. It's all about one-upmanship and who can write the next best thing, who can write the next best Western, the next best postmodernist novel, who's going to be the next Cormac McCarthy. But if you were writing about the clouds out in the sky, there is no one-upmanship. There is no marketing. You're not going to end up on the New York Times bestsellers list with that. But you are going to connect with something deeper, and the audience who is going to enjoy that is going to be connecting with you at that level also. And now kind of spiraling back to fiction, though. From what I can tell, most of the time with fiction authors, their masterpieces are written when they have a huge sense of independence. And it could be at any age, but most of the time, it is between the ages of 30 and 50. When I look at authors who I cover on this channel, David Foster Wallace, he wrote Infinite Jest from like 25 to like 35. And a lot of it was written after he got sober from being an alcoholic and a drug addict. And he had this profound new sense of energy and discipline that he was able to bring to the table. Cormac McCarthy, when he moved to Tucson, Arizona in 1974, had just divorced his second wife and had this profound sense of freedom. And when you go to the archive and see his notes, he had this very beautiful and lively energy. And that's what helped him write Sutri and Blood Meridian. Faulkner is an interesting exception in su- at, at some level because he wrote As I Lay Dying very shortly after his marriage and, ov- and famously he wrote it in six weeks at the age of 33. And the success that he got from that I think really did set him up for a successful life. And who am I missing? What authors had this profound sense of freedom in their life and wrote some of their best works and who was really tied down? I'm trying to figure out where Faulkner is right and where he is wrong. A lot of you guys probably no better than I do, but just I'm thinking of great authors in my head right now. Dostoevsky, he wrote The Double and Poor Folk when he was hanging out with the bourgeoisie of Russian society. And then, you know, obviously he goes to prison and when he comes back, he starts writing the best novels of his life when he's impoverished, when he does have a wife, but he doesn't really have too many connections to the world when he's living in Europe and these other places. Once again, a profound sense of freedom and not too much responsibility. Same with a lot of philosophers. A lot of philosophers, when you look at Nietzsche and Kant, um, and a lot of the best ones, they didn't have families. They weren't really tied down. They had this huge freedom. Then over the course of 20 or 30 years, they wrote a lot of their best works from like 40 to 60 before they got kind of too old and senile. And so do you guys believe in this concept? Do you guys believe that authors peak? Do you guys believe that you can continue to grow into your 70s, 80s, and 90s? I know that Cormac McCarthy worked on The Passenger for 60 years and wrote and finished a lot of it when he had cancer and was in his late 80s. And so I think The Passenger and Stella Maris are masterpieces. And so I obviously don't think it's impossible. And there are people like Gene Wolfe out there who had a family, who had a job, and was writing you know, great series like The Book of the New Sun, Just on his off time, which, you know, there's always a great example to dissolve any rule or theory about writing. But this was Faulkner's idea. I don't know if this was him just looking back at when he wrote his best work and his best poetry. Because in Faulkner's latter state, in Faulkner's 
later life he didn't write as well in my opinion and so thank you guys for being here thank you guys for being a part of the literary renaissance and i will see you guys very soon in the next video